You can't teach anybody anything, only make them realize the answers are already inside them. All truths are easy to understand once they are discovered. The point is to discover them. The laws of nature are written by the hand of God in the language of mathematics. I have never met a man so ignorant that I couldn't learn something from him. In the sciences, the authority of thousands of opinions is not worth as much as one tiny spark of reason in an individual man. Knowing thyself, that is the greatest wisdom. I do not feel obliged to believe that the same God who has endowed us with senses, reason, and intellect has intended us to forego their use. To understand the universe, you must understand the language in which it's written, the language of mathematics. To be humane, we must ever be ready to pronounce that wise, ingenious and modest statement I do not know. Two truths cannot contradict one another. The sun, with all those planets revolving around it and dependent on it, can still ripen a bunch of grapes as if it had nothing else in the universe to do. Nonetheless, it moves. Measure what can be measured and make measurable what cannot be measured. There are those who reason well, but they are greatly outnumbered by those who reason badly. The greatest wisdom is to get to know oneself. The Bible shows the way to go to heaven, not the way the heavens go. Where the senses fail us, reason must step in. Mathematics is the language with which God has written the universe. They who depend upon manifest observations will philosophize better than those who persist in opinions repugnant to the senses. By denying scientific principles, one may maintain any paradox. You cannot teach a person something he does not already know. You can only bring what he does know to his awareness. It is surely harmful to souls to make it a heresy to believe what is proved. Wine is sunlight held together by water. Who would dare assert that we know all there is to be known? Measure what is measurable and make measurable what is not so. With regard to matters requiring thought, the less people know and understand about them, the more positively they attempt to argue concerning them. You may force me to say what you wish, you may revile me for saying what I do, but it moves. Science proceeds more by what it has learned to ignore than what it takes into account. The book of nature is written in the language of mathematics. Nothing occurs contrary to nature except the impossible, and that never occurs. Mathematics is the key and door to the sciences. Scripture is a book about going to heaven. It's not a book about how the heavens go. 
Nature is relentless and unchangeable, and it is indifferent as to whether its hidden reasons and actions are understandable to man or not. Being infinitely amazed, so do I give thanks to God, who has been pleased to make me the first observer of marvelous things, unrevealed to bygone ages. If you could see the earth illuminated when you were in a place as dark as night, it would look to you more splendid than the moon. Facts which at first seem improbable will, even on scant explanation, drop the cloak which has hidden them and stand forth in naked and simple beauty. See now the power of truth. The Milky Way is nothing else but a mass of innumerable stars planted together in clusters. In questions of science, the authority of a thousand is not worth the humble reasoning of a single individual. It is a beautiful and delightful sight to behold the body of the moon. I think that in the discussion of natural problems, we ought to begin not with the scriptures, but with experiments and demonstrations. Holy Scripture could never lie or err dot 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 its decrees are of absolute and inviolable truth. Nature is written in mathematical language. It vexes me when they would constrain science by the authority of the Scriptures and yet do not consider themselves bound to answer reason and experiment. See now the power of truth, the same experiment which at first glance seemed to show one thing, when more carefully examined, assures us of the contrary. Nature dot 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 does not act by means of many things when it can do so by means of a few. I do not know what to say in a case so surprising, so unlooked for and so novel. Some, merely to contradict what I had said, did not scruple to cast doubt upon things they had seen with their own eyes again and again. Nature's great book is written in mathematics. The earth, in fair and grateful exchange, pays back to the moon an illumination similar to that which it receives from her throughout nearly all the darkest gloom of the night. Nothing can be taught to a man, only it's possibly to help him to discover it inside. Holy Writ was intended to teach men how to go to heaven, not how the heavens go. We must say that there are as many squares as there are numbers. To command their professors of astronomy to refute their own observations is to command them not to see what they do see and not to understand what they do understand. What has philosophy got to do with measuring anything? It's the mathematicians you have to trust and they measure the skies like we measure a field. It was granted to me alone to discover all the new phenomena in the sky and nothing to anybody else. This is the truth which neither envy nor malice can suppress. I abjure with a sincere heart and unfeigned faith. I curse and detest the said errors and heresies and generally all and every error and sect contrary to the Holy Catholic Church. 
For my part, I consider the Earth very noble and admirable precisely because of the diverse alterations, changes, generations, etc. that occur in it incessantly. Names and attributes must be accommodated to the essence of things and not the essence to the names, since things come first and names afterwards. They seem to forget that the increase of known truths stimulates the investigation, establishment, and growth of the arts, not their domination or destruction. Well, since paradoxes are at hand, let us see how it might be demonstrated that in a finite continuous extension it is not impossible for infinitely many voids to be found. Philosophy is written in that great book which ever lies before our eyes, I mean the universe, but we cannot understand it if we do not first learn the language and grasp the symbols in which it is written. I think that in the discussion of natural problems we ought to begin not with the scriptures, but with experiments and demonstrations. The Bible shows the way to go to heaven, not the way the heavens go. If I were again beginning my studies, I would follow the advice of Plato and start with mathematics. Nature is relentless and unchangeable, and it is indifferent as to whether its hidden reasons and actions are understandable to man or not. Mathematics is the language in which God has written the universe. Who would dare assert that we know all there is to be known? God is known by nature in his works and by doctrine in his revealed word. I truly believe the book of philosophy to be that which stands perpetually open before our eyes, though since it is written in characters different from those of our alphabet it cannot be read by everyone. Nothing physical which sense experience sets before our eyes or which necessary demonstrations prove to us ought to be called into question upon the testimony of biblical passages. I am certainly interested in a tribunal in which, for having used my reason, I was deemed little less than a heretic. Who knows but men will reduce me from the profession of a philosopher to that of historian of the Inquisition. Passion is the genesis of genius. Measure what can be measured and make measurable what cannot be measured. I have never met a man so ignorant that I couldn't learn something from him. Curiosity is the key to problem solving. Two truths cannot contradict one another. Measure what is measurable and make measurable what is not so. In the sciences, the authority of thousands of opinions is not worth as much as one tiny spark of reason in an individual man. To be humane, we must ever be ready to pronounce that wise, ingenious and modest statement I do not know. Vision, I say, is related to light itself, but of this sensation and the things pertaining to it, I pretend to understand but little, and since even a long time would not suffice to explain that trifle, or even to hint at an explanation, I pass over this in silence. It is surely harmful to souls to make it a heresy to believe what is proved. 
All truths are easy to understand once they are discovered. The point is to discover them. The prohibition of science would be contrary to the Bible, which in hundreds of places teaches us how the greatness and the glory of God shine forth marvelously in all his works and is to be read above all in the open book of the heavens. If experiments are performed thousands of times at all seasons and in every place without once producing the effects mentioned by your philosophers, poets, and historians, this will mean nothing, and we must believe their words rather than our own eyes. Measure what can be measured and make measurable what cannot be measured. I do not think it is necessary to believe that the same God who has given us our senses, reason, and intelligence wished us to abandon their use, giving us by some other means the information that we could gain through them. That sculpture is more admirable than painting for the reason that it contains relief, and painting does not is completely false. Rather, how much more admirable the painting must be considered, if having no relief at all, it appears to have as much as sculpture. The laws of nature are written by the hand of God in the language of mathematics. Nothing occurs contrary to nature except the impossible, and that never occurs. But some, besides allegiance to their original error, possess I know not what fanciful interest in remaining hostile not so much toward the things in question as toward their discoverer. It is a beautiful and delightful sight to behold the body of the moon. By denying scientific principles, one may maintain any paradox. One can understand nature only when one has learned the language and the signs in which it speaks to us. But this language is mathematics and these signs are mathematical figures. To understand the universe, you must understand the language in which it's written, the language of mathematics. It is necessary for the Bible, in order to be accommodated to the understanding of every man, to speak many things which appear to differ from the absolute truth so far as the bare meaning of the words is concerned. Facts which at first seem improbable will, even on scant explanation, drop the cloak which has hidden them and stand forth in naked and simple beauty. I believe that the intention of Holy Writ was to persuade men of the truths necessary to salvation, such as neither science nor other means could render credible, but only the voice of the Holy Spirit. To excite in us tastes, odors, and sounds I believe that nothing is required in external bodies except shapes, numbers, and slow or rapid movements. If ears, tongues, and noses were removed, shapes and numbers and motions would remain, but not odors or tastes or sounds. In my studies of astronomy and philosophy, I hold this opinion about the universe, that the sun remains fixed in the center of the circle of heavenly bodies without changing its place, and the earth, turning upon itself, moves round the sun. The deeper I go in considering the vanities of popular reasoning, the lighter and more foolish I find them. What greater stupidity can be imagined than that of calling jewels, silver, and gold precious, and earth and soil base? It reveals to me the causes of many natural phenomena that are entirely incomprehensible in the light of the generally accepted hypotheses. To refute the latter, I collected many proofs, 
but I do not publish them. I would dare to publish my speculations if there were people men like you. The universe is a grand book which cannot be read until one first learns to comprehend the language and become familiar with the characters in which it is composed. It is written in the language of mathematics. I therefore concluded and decided unhesitatingly that there are three stars in the heavens moving about Jupiter as Venus and Mercury about the Sun which at length was established as clear as daylight by numerous other observations. The Milky Way is nothing else but a mass of innumerable stars planted together in clusters. Philosophy itself cannot but benefit from our disputes, for if our conceptions prove true, new achievements will be made if false, their refutation will further confirm the original doctrines. Who would set a limit to the mind of man, who would dare assert that we know all there is to be known? You cannot teach a man anything, you can only help him find it within himself. The aim of science is not to open the door to infinite wisdom, but to set a limit to infinite error. Copernicus, Galileo, and Kepler did not solve an old problem. They asked a new question, and in doing so they changed the whole basis on which the old questions had been framed. All the world says, yes, we know what's written in the books, but now let's see what our eyes tell us. Telling me there's no difference between the moon and the earth. Measure what is measurable and make measurable what is not so. If the world is turning, even the church can't stop it. If it isn't turning, nobody can go out and make it turn. I'm teaching all the time. When am I to learn? The greatest wisdom is to get to know oneself. We cannot teach people anything. We can only help them discover it within themselves. Proof seduces them. One of the greatest pleasures of the human race is thinking. The Egyptians saw the sun and called him Ra, the sun god. He rode across the sky in his chariot until it was time to sleep. Copernicus and Gal
Galileo proved otherwise, and poor Ra lost his divinity. Philosophy is written in this grand book, the universe, which stands continually open to our gaze. But the book cannot be understood unless one first learns to comprehend the language and read the letters in which it is composed. Stupidity isn't invincible. The nature of the human mind is such that unless it is stimulated by images of things acting upon it from without, all remembrance of them passes easily away. Thinking is one of the greatest pleasures of the human race. You can't teach anybody anything, only make them realize the answers are already inside them. Unhappy the land that is in need of heroes. Philosophy is written in that great book which ever lies before our eyes. I mean the universe, but we cannot understand it if we do not first learn the language and grasp the symbols in which it is written. Such a lot is won when even a single man gets to his feet and says no. We must say that there are as many squares as there are numbers. God is known by nature in his works and by doctrine in his revealed word. The sun, with all those planets revolving around it and dependent on it, can still ripen a bunch of grapes as if it had nothing else in the universe to do. My dear Kepler, what would you say of the learned here, who, replete with the pertinacity of the asp, have steadfastly refused to cast a glance through the telescope? What shall we make of this? Shall we laugh, or shall we cry? The greatness and the glory of God shine forth marvelously in all his works, and is to be read above all in the open book of the heavens. We cannot teach people anything. We can only help them discover it within themselves. To me, a great ineptitude exists on the part
those who would have it that God made the universe more in proportion to the small capacity of their reason than to his immense, his infinite power. And believe me, if I were again beginning my studies, I should follow the advice of Plato and start with mathematics. The sun with all the planets around it, and depending on it, can still ripen a bunch of grapes as though it had nothing else in the universe to do. Who indeed will set bounds to human ingenuity, who will assert that everything in the universe capable of being perceived is already discovered and known. In the future, there will be opened a gateway and a road to a large and excellent science into which minds more piercing than mine shall penetrate to recesses still deeper. You cannot teach a person anything, you can only help him find it within himself. The increases of known truth stimulates the investigation, establishment, and growth of the arts. The sun, with all he planets revolving around it, and depending on it, can still ripen a bunch of grapes as though it had nothing else in the universe to do. They seem to forget that the increase of known truths stimulates the investigation, establishment, and growth of the arts, not their domination or destruction. In the sciences, the authority of thousands of opinions is not worth as much as one tiny spark of reason in an individual man. By denying scientific principles, one may maintain any paradox. Measure what can be measured and make measurable what cannot be measured. The sun, with all those planets revolving around it and dependent on it, can still ripen a bunch of grapes as if it had nothing else in the universe to do. Scripture is a book about going to heaven. It's not a book about how the heavens go. Mathematics is the key and door to the sciences. 